Hey, hello. Hello, welcome. It's Sunday and the weather is super nice and I'm so glad that you're still here um, joining my tutorial. So we are Python Zero to Hero and today, well, by the way, first of all, this month is testing month. So uh, we have a month of test related topic um, that, of course, is like testing in Python. And um, so, yeah, so last week, actually, we, we you know, uh, have a different topic in, uh, in you know, PyTest and um, we try a little bit of different strategy of uh, making our test, you know, um, working and more sophisticated. And oh, by the way, for, you know, uh, new viewers, I have the slide deck available. Um, so the link on top is you can grab the slides. It's publicly available on slides.com. I really like that. I have using that for like more than a year now. So kind of like uh, making a presentation there. So, um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I'll just like jump into it. I won't spend time introducing myself again. I, th I hope you know me and uh, if you're in the chat, say hi. So I kind of like, because I now I recognize some names of people who watch my tutorial. So I kind of like, I know that you're there, which would be great. So um, let's go to talk about. Um, okay, so maybe first have a quick recap. I think, yeah, we won't spend too much time. I'm just like, because last week we have done PyTest with Fixture and Mock, so we can do more stuff with PyTest. And um, so using Fixture actually like kind of lets you to put in different parameters. Uh, today we're going to use a different strategy to put in uh, parameters to do your test. But um, last week we tried something. I'm using the fixture um, to inject the data and, you know, um, to kind of set your, your test in the right, uh, you know, right kind of environment before you test it out and use mock to replace some object. Uh, so you don't have to rely on external environments. Um, so if you have questions, uh, I always welcome you to type in the chat really like answering questions and sometimes like people help me out in the chat because for example i forgot to switch this the screen because i was too focusing on the live coding and sometimes my mic doesn't work and yeah if you could type in the chat that would be like really great that really helps me a lot so i really love uh people who kind of um join in the chat so uh, today we got to talk about property based testing. I hope it's won't gonna be too long because like I think last week it was like uh, an hour and forty five minutes something like that. It's one of the tutorials either uh, this one or or the one on Monday which is a data science tutorial that like it really overruns a lot and uh, it you know it kind of like make uh, I, I don't want to make this uh, tutorials too long too too long because um, I know that you know it's Sunday you know people may be like a bit you know want some rest and I uh, just want to learn some uh, Python so I just kind of try to make this uh, shorter and also easier for people to recap as well because um, yeah it won't be like you know super long kind of videos for people to watch and they could learn something so um, yeah, we have this property based testing. So what is property based testing? First of all, is um, well, because like last week we try a uh, promise twice and um, we kind of think of a set of cases that we want to test. Right. So we think of um, what could be the input. So we kind of sometimes we try to put in the, the parameters as the edge cases that would probably break it. So we won't really want to test it. Um, but it kind of requires you to think of it. It requires the, uh, the you know, the um, the engineers to really, really like uh, think that what could, what is worth testing, right? So what could possibly break it, and I really want to test it, because sometimes the cases are quite similar, and you kind of like, oh, if I test, for example, one, two, three, four, probably like uh, five, six, seven, eight, two will be fine. So you may not want to test that. Maybe you want to test like one, two, three, four, and one, one, two, three, because double the digits may cause some problems. So you have to really use your brain power <laughs> to think of some, you know, um, test cases. And sometimes you don't, you can't even think about it, you know, because because um, you don't really know if you know that you would already be like solving that case in your in your function. But sometimes like those cases that you overlook, like is causing the problem, right? So um, it's, it's, well, it's, it's better than not you know, um, testing different parameters. It's kind of also save you time instead of writing many, many, many tests. Uh, you just, you know, change the parameters. Of course, change the expected output accordingly, but you can still use the same test function to, to test your, your your stuff. But um, yeah, but what if it's kind of like uh, there is a way to generate all these cases automatically? So a property-based test is that idea. So um, 
so under the hood, actually, the property-based test would be like is what the me mechanism is that it will randomly generate a test case which is within the range of the parameter. So, for example, if you like the the input of that you know that function would be a string. So it would randomly generate a string that is acceptable. So maybe the string is like always oh, 10 characters max. So you generate a random string that is within 10 characters, or maybe like oh this function only taking strings that consist of um, alphabet. So you generate a string that you know that fulfill that condition, but it's randomly generated. So um, so it's either you know your your condition is you know, not not exact enough, so it generates something that breaks your, your 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 function, or um, you haven't think of that case. That's totally valid, but it's just like you overlook it. It's like, oh yeah, I haven't think about that, but I should be able to accept that as well. So you write something, you know, to to handle that. So this is how the property based uh, testing could benefit your uh, to your your product. You know, you could you know avoid those kind of um, exceptions that break your uh, your the case and it can have like cover a better range of tests as well also avoiding you to spend many many effort in thinking of like what should be the case that we should test so actually it's smarter than that when, when we look at uh, the, the actual you know um, test suite that you do that is actually smarter than that like you you may have a lot of questions at the moment but it will be clearer when we dive into the the, the, the test itself so uh, stay you know like uh, stay with me and uh, we, we would know a little bit more so so when does it happen so in actually 1999 uh, it's, well it's quite a long time ago now is uh, 20 something years now um, 21 year so there is a uh, a, a, a uh, you know a, a software it's called quick check that is uh, I forgot the language that is written in it's something that is not popular um, but in uh, so they have this idea so um, they as you know the assertions are written you know it's like logically so instead of thinking about case by case you think of the logic of what you know um, should be the parameters and then quick chat will generate the cases for you according to your logic and it will find those cases that failed it you know find find those um find those you know this like uh, for, for yeah for space <laughs> of that ex uh, assertion so i uh, kind of find those cases that potentially break your code and um, so you can kind of deal with them and then after that it would try to like uh, reduce it to a minimal case so but like those cases like i say one two three four and maybe five six seven eight basically they're more or less the same they both pass so it's not the case that is interested so quick check after testing those would be like oh it's fine i don't care about that next time but it will remember those that pop potentially break your code like one one two three like things that is a little bit different and um, so it won't be like testing many, many random things. So it's smarter than just like random guessing. It is kind of, for me, it's like AI testing. It's like, it's like using a bot to help you to test. That's really, really smart. And um, so I really like that idea. And so, so that's, uh, that's, you know, uh, that's quick check. It will remember uh, your, the cases that fail. So you have to pay attention to those cases. And uh, so probably you want to test against those cases every time because those would probably be the edge cases. And um, so that, that's quick check. That's quite old. That's uh, not in Python. So uh, we are not using that today. <laughs> um, but that's the kind of like a, the, the, the father of all these um, property based testing. So that, that's the cool thing. And you can, I found this information on Wikipedia. So basically, you can read more if you want to. Um, so today, well, we have to use something, so we got to use hypothesis. So hypothesis actually is is not just limited to Python. It's basically a um, a, a tool that's general. Like uh, it also appears in I believe in Java and other languages, um, but it's also support Python. So it got uh, a Python library that's uh, you know it's also named hypothesis. So um, so hypothesis is kind of like a modern version of quick check. So it runs your test, you know, against uh, uh, since scenarios that you set, so you have a set of um, what you want to test. Um, is it, for example, uh, you see later that when we talk about a strategy, it could be a string, it could be a number, it could be a mix of both. It could be, you know, you just set your logic of how to generate those test cases. So you set up the strategy of generating those test cases. And um, so, yeah, so you don't have to do like human effort to think about test cases. And um, you know, we find the edge case like what QuickCheck does, and 
um, yeah, so it would like have again. It's the same thing as uh, almost like same thing as quick check, but it's uh, Pythonized. So uh, if you want to know more, you can go to hypothesis.works, so it's their official website. So um, so yeah, that's the basic idea. So uh, without further ado, let's get started and look at hypothesis. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, installation. So um, yeah, you want to install uh, your you, <laughs> you want to install it before you use it. So like I said before, it's a, it's a Python um, library on PyPI, so it's available. You can just pip install it. Uh, but also, Hypothesis provided a lot of um, different, you know, um, different extensions. They, they have first party extensions, so like the one below that you see that uh, there's Pandas and Django. So um, what those uh, extension does is that it will provide some specific objects for you to use, for example, if you install the pandas extension, uh, like the, the, the example below, then you uh, so on top of all these um, uh, strategy that you have as a core strategy in hypothesis, like like what I just mentioned, you know, string integers and these things, um, you also have a let's say pandas data frame that you could generate, um, or a, pen, uh, a pandas series that you could generate. So. Um, so yeah, those are the extensions. There's also extensions like Dashutail, it will let you have the time zone, or uh, uh, Py, uh, TZ. But PyTZ is like, I think it's tried, I think uh, the, the developers have tried to retire PyTZ. I'm not so sure. I just read something that um, Paul, the maintainer of uh, Dashutail and also uh, a Python core developer was uh, talking about, you know, migrating it. So I'm not sure. Maybe uh, it's kind of getting out of fashion so because, because people use date util um, often recently, like to deal with time zone and the stuff. So, but uh, those are all available. Um, so if you look, look at uh, Hypothesis documentation, you will see like what uh, extensions are available to install. So some of them may be useful for you. For example, if you're building a Django app, you may want to uh, install the Django um, extension there. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is a usage example. So what I got to do now is that I got to, oh, actually, by the way, I, I got this from the, uh, the documentation site. So I put the link down below so you can actually uh, go there and read, uh, read it through. But, uh, so because this is a video tutorial <laughs> that I am going to, um, to actually just, you know, uh, show you and, uh, kind of uh, walk you through on the way, uh, on the go. So what I got to do is I got to switch to my coding tutorial. So yeah, this is the screen that I always forget to switch back and forth between this and the presentation. So today the solution is that I will I make the the presentation and the code a little bit bigger. So um I hope that you know I don't have to switch back and forth. It's big enough for you to see and that's what like that's I won't forget to switch back. <laughs> I guess last week is like so funny. I was like talking without switching the screen for like five minutes and until uh, Lace, um, you know, my friend Lace let me know that, oh, you haven't switched back. It's like, oh my God. And it, it's super funny when I do the post-production is ah. <laughs> I would just put in like what happened there for people to see. It's like super funny, but uh, not very nice to the viewer, but it's super funny. Okay. So uh, let's have a look here. So uh, what I got to do is I got to hide this thing. So you've got more spaces to look at my code. So this is the, the code that I just copied there. So it's, I just name it down more. And I hope my head is not in the way as well in my chair. So sorry about that. I, yeah, I'll see if I can scroll uh, up a little bit uh, next time. But um, yeah, so you see that uh, we have uh, this. We have, basically, it's just two uh, functions. So it's encode and decode. So um, Encode and decode, they are, you know, uh, there is, is, is a popular fun like function to uh, to test uh, hypothesis is, um, you know, something like this, because you see that when we write a test function, it's super easy. Uh, we just encode the, the input string and then we decode it, it should give, give back the original string, right? So it's super easy to test if we use hypothesis, because we don't have to worry about what string to test and it will just generate all the cases for us. Um, so we, this is a encoding um, encoding function uh, from the uh, from I think they got it from a Wikipedia. So this is a, a popular algorithm to encode a string. So let's see what it does. Actually, I haven't looked into details. So let's look at it together. So the count is set to one at the beginning, and a brief is set to nothing, and then there's a list there. So for all the characters in the input strings, is uh, you know kind of um, process the character one by one. So if it's not a brief, 
Um, so it's not an empty string. It's very funny. Uh, then, you know, and I don't know why it's got two things here. I think because, um, yeah, because like I think usually I would I would love to. Okay, so if free okay if free is empty, then yeah, then basically this won't be executed. So um, so yeah, it's a bit. Uh, I think it's like for some cases that you have to do this. Uh, I can't think of any on top of my head, but. Um, so, so for a normal string, for example, a character just like a character, then it won't, uh, first of all, it won't be empty, and then also it won't go through this. Um, but if it's, um, you know, not equal, to, so yeah, if it's not equal to prev, so so that would be inside here, but it won't, you know, because prev is empty, so it won't execute this one. Then it would, uh, the count would be one, so it resets the counts, and prev equals to character. Oh, so pre prev is like saving the previous characters. So now it's like it will be the first character. So um, so I think yeah, this is the initial condition then because uh, yeah, then you just commit. So basically, it's checking whether the previous character is the same as the the this character. And if it's the same, it's just like plus one, and it would just like count. So it's just counting all the characters and a pen on the entry. So um, yeah, so it's just like looking you know uh, one by one. So if it's uh, uh, duplicated, so. Uh, it would just like put in so for example um one one two three then it would be like one square uh, you know one duplicate and then two two three and if it's one 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 there's one three so um so yeah it's just like a abbreviate so this is very simple you just abbreviate the string into you know when it's uh, you know repeated many times it's just like compress that uh in rather than storing the characters individually just you know oh, that character and then repeat how many times okay so uh, yeah, so that's how you um, so you put it in a list as well. So uh, it go from a string into a list. So how to decode that? So how to go back from that list into a string? So actually, that's that's quite simple, of course. And you, you know, like if if it appear like three times, just expand it and then you know add it in together and join them back together into a string. Okay. So this is very simple and straightforward. So let's see. Uh, if that works, okay. So if if so that that's from the wiki, it's probably correct, right? So uh, let's let's test it out. So, um. So uh, okay. So I should go to the next slide. There's so many things on my screen right now. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, sometimes the man maneuver is a bit difficult. Okay. So, so this is uh, the, the test that we write. So we are testing it. So uh, so we put it in a separate file. It's just like I love doing it that way to separate the test and uh, the code. Um, that's more neat, uh, and this is the common practice, so I do it that way. So we use hypothesis here. So in hypothesis, I import given. So given is a is a uh, actual decorator you can see here <laughs> that is uh, provided by hypothesis. Hypothesis. So uh, this is what uh, you know you put in the the strategy here, so that it would be you know injecting this um, strategy as as a, as a parameter here that you could use. Okay. This is the decorator that does the job, and you need the strategy. So strategy just mean that um, what this uh, parameter should be. So this should be a text, okay? So you, you so it's just a string that is generated. So uh, you so you can see that it got encoded and got decoded. It should come back to the same thing, right? So straightforward. Let's try it out. So let's go to our uh, a terminal there. Oh, why is string down when I click on it? Okay, it's a bit strange, but oop. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the Mac being funny. So I hope it's big enough for you to see. I try to make it bigger this week, like I said before. So um, okay. So uh, I'm already in the directory, so it's cool. We can just run pytest. Okay, test and uh, yeah, demo dot py. So okay, let's run it. And ooh, we got some error message. So let's see what happened here. So and okay, so uh. Yeah, so uh, this is saying, oh, this 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 test fail. Of course, we only got one test. If it's fail, it's that test. It's, it can't be other things. And um, so, what is going on here? Let's look at all these error message. So, it said uh, unbound, uh, you know, error, and um, it failed. And oh, that's something uh, you know, uh, kind of special here that when you just run pytest, you won't have this. Is that uh, it's generated by hypothesis. It says that. Oh, um, there's a falsifying example. So there's one uh, example that this whole thing breaks. And what is that? When s equals to nothing. 
So, oh, what's going on here? So let's go back to our code and try to debug it and see what's going on. So come back here and see that, hmm, hmm. Let's see. So if I put in an empty string, so what happened is that, oh, for this for loop, I would totally break it. That's why I got that error message, that character. And if we look at the error message again, so we got a, yeah. Local variable character referenced before assignment. So, uh, yeah, so because, you know, um, so because, you know, um, input string would be, you know, um, empty, so this one won't execute. And that's why we don't have character here. So when we, it comes to here, uh, 914, then of course, you know, um, the program would break. Python would be like, what is character? I haven't seen it. And uh, oh, because we haven't do the for loop. So um, sorry, <laughs> uh, it's not there. And um, and also this that's strange because uh, when we loop it, then it should actually add it in. So why is this not um, indentated? And return. Yeah, it, it's kind of got some funny indentation there as well. So let me double check with the code here. So let's you know, see the original code where it's like a copy and paste thing. So no, it's it's yeah, it's it's there. So um, count plus one. That's very interesting because yeah, I think that what it should be is that it should be indentated. So anyway, uh, we gotta we gotta try to um to fix that. So if um if uh. You know, uh, not input string, which will give us a, um, you know, so if it's empty, it will be uh, considered false. So I think I showed it, uh, you know, weeks ago when we talk about um, true and false and if statement. So if it's an empty string, it will consider false. So if, yeah, not, so not false, it's true. So it will be like this. And we will have a return, which is an empty list, okay? So this one should be fine, but. Yeah, I don't know why this one is. Uh... So yeah, f for me it looks like it should be like this, right? So this is super strange. So let let's run it like this to to see if that passes the case. So what I gotta do is that now because I know that there's a fail case that I absolutely want to test. So what I gotta do is that because like if you look at the the documentation here, I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Oops, yeah. So if you see that uh, there's a way to to fix uh, to kind of pinned a case that you want to uh, test for sure is to use example. So this is an, another decorator that um, that hypothesis provided. So we can actually put it here. Of course, we have to import it. Yeah, otherwise it, we will have an error again. Okay. So yeah, like this is, an, this is an example that I absolutely want to test because I know that it failed last time. Okay, so you can do it like this. So it, it would uh, test it for sure. So let's try it again. See if it works. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, let me. I think this is a bit silly. So let me put it back. Yeah, I ha haven't get my head around to that yet. But uh, yeah, so it, it it gives me one more zero. So um, yeah, let me try that. So yeah, now it pauses. So yeah, I still don't know why this is this character thing is uh, maybe it's doing something different from what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, pre equals to characters, that entry is char character count, but this is after all the for loop. So uh, this is, yeah, that's why I found it quite funny. Um, but actually I don't know what this function does, so I'm just guessing. So maybe, yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's just like, because when you decode it, you only take one character and count to the list. But uh, yeah, it's... Input string, it just go through this. So yeah, we actually just like do the last one here. And I don't know why it's not in the for loop. Um, yeah, maybe it's just counting. And... Hmm. Oh yeah, it's, it's append here. Sorry, yeah, I overlooked. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if, if previous is not empty, then you would append it. So uh, if I put it like there, I just double double put it there. So yeah, if, if I do it like this, I just... Double count, that's why that, that failed. Okay, so it was correct. So, yeah, this is like this. So, um, yeah, so if, it, yeah, if, if it's like, uh, yeah, if, if it's a uh, previous, it's already there, so you would uh, already append it here, so you already did. Okay, good. So, um, right, so this is a, a, a very, very simple example that, uh, you know, it just, reproduce uh, what is from the documentation but uh, later we try to do something more um, 
kind of uh, real life coding here. So I, I love the thrill of doing live coding, you know, um, with kind of like blind live coding. I have, again, planned it in my head, but I will see if it works out. So, oh, you like at this this point, you may ask like, um, so um, what is it useful for? Like, I well, I know that you can do it like coding, like encoding and decoding, but you know, can I put it something else? Can I just use it on a string? No, actually it's not. So let's go back to the slice. Um, so you have different, uh, I've already done this. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you can actually have different strategies, uh, to test, um, to test your, 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 your tests. I mean, uh, your code. So, uh, in that example, I've shown you how to, uh, you know, generate a random input strings to test your um, functions. But actually, there are more than that. There are different ones. So, for example, you can generate an integer, and for an integer, you can actually uh, specific uh, a range as well. So it could be, uh, you know, have a minimum value and maximum value, and they're all in the documentation. I just pinpoint some of the common ones, so you can just directly go there and see. So, yeah, it returns uh, an integer, but like if you know, if it's not none, then you set the range. So it would be inclusively, including those mac and mean value. And um, yeah, with string towards zeros and negative values, string towards positive. So, so yeah, they would just like try to test it, you know. Um, uh, yeah, so like with the minimal, uh, minimum uh, set. So if it's like, oh, 10 and zero behave the same way, or just 10 and one behave the same way, which tends to use one. As a, as a definitive uh, test case, okay? Yeah, so if you're like, yeah, if negative and positive behave the same, they will be replaced by a, a positive. So, um, yeah, so this is how they prefer one case towards another. So, um, so yeah, th I think that makes sense. Like if you're testing 9999 and it behave as the same as one, then you would just use one as the example. This is how our brain works as well. So I think that's, um, that's, that's, that's makes sense. Um, so if you set nothing, then I think you just like assume that it's a, it's very, very like, you know, it would just like be infinite range. So I think it would just test a very, very l large integer to see if that's fine. Um, yeah, so there's uh, other things that I pick up four of them, but there are actually I can show you how many of them here is like that is like so many of them here. Some of them are less useful. Some of them are more useful. I pick only four of them. But I'm sure that you have to really look at the whole thing here to find the one that you need. So um, I won't go through them. I think I would just spend more time live coding rather than just like talking through one by one. And but I would just talk through this for for this for um for strategy that I picked because they are more useful and they are quite different from each other. So this is list. So list is actually um you can put in the elements that this list will consist. Okay. So you generate a list that consists of these elements. So these elements could be a strategy. So uh, you can see from the example here, it could be a strategy that like, oh, I want, um, you know, uh, so you put in a triple there is like con consists of two integers. So you're con constructing, <laughs> constructing your, um, your test case by, you know, it's like Lego. So you put two integers together to construct a triple and then you put the two posts, you know, in the list. So you generate a list of two posts that have integers inside. Uh, yeah. So, and um, yeah, there's also other conditions you can add as well. Uh, you can set the size, there's a range of the size. So this list could be a, a non-fixed non size. So you can have, you know, a list that you go from, from a zero size to a 10, uh, you know, the length of 10, or it could be any, any size of uh, list. It, again, you know, hypothesis would test it for you. And um, yeah, so it would, uh, it doesn't talk about the shrinking of the, yeah, it doesn't talk about the shrinking, but I think, again, it would use similar philosophy to minimize the, the test cases. Yeah, it was shrink towards uh, remove elements that doesn't matter the test, okay? And uh, sh shrinking each individual element of the list. Yeah, and again, if you have integers, it would just follow the integer, you know, um, rules to shrink it um, to, to the minimal test cases that you need to test to be sure. So. Um, what else that we could uh, that we could control? We could also control the unique by. So unique by is a um, so it's a functions that you could you know um, con you know so you can control um, that's the, the elements inside. You know this should fulfill this condition. So um, yeah, you can see that maybe like you can't repeat the, the elements, so you can use this. 
uh, to set it and um, yeah unique again like do you want unique uh, elements so you can also set that as well so yeah so this is uh, also again very common that like you make uh, encounter and use quite a lot uh, is the list to put it into your uh, test cases okay so another one is one off so yeah you may now think of like what if i have multiple like i should you know my function could actually handle both integer and string so uh, you can use one off that means that it could be either one so or it could be you could put in none and text so it, it could be like it could be any string and also it could be none um so yeah this is uh yeah this is one off that uh, is is relatively more simple and could you know um yeah and uh it could lead, let you have more control of your strategies okay so uh what is the last one that i was going to talk about oh yeah samples from so this is um quite useful so uh, what if you know uh th actually that happens quite a lot right so you have an options as an argument of your function and then it could be either um you know a b or c so it could be three colors it could be red blue or green so a user just will spell out red blue or green so you accept only three string red blue or green so um how could you generate that you can just generate a random string it will break right so uh, that's actually the user's fault if you document it it's like it's it could either be like those three so you can use samples from so oh, oh not there oh yeah samples from so samples from is that you can put in all the options um and you can even put in a list of options yeah so um yes yeah, so you know um uh the hypothesis will just like pick one of them uh from there uh just is okay this mentioned just just is means that it's only one options <laughs> so it's not even if you ha only have one option you just use just there uh sometimes you may want to separate different uh, options as different test cases then you can use just uh, just to make it neat and tidy i know it's not necessarily like you don't have to use hypothesis for that but um yeah but you could use that as well um place them within yeah so yeah it will also string i uh, try to string it and it would just try to you know um yeah this uh, you don't have to care about this too much because they uh, usually hypothesis will handle it gracefully for you okay hmm so Oh, I, I know what I forgot to test. Uh, I forgot to test. Uh, sorry, I skipped ahead. So let's let's go back. Yeah, I totally forgot. Like this looks very similar, but like uh, we forgot. Uh, I forgot that actually there is a uh, resetting of the count here. So this is another fair example. I'll just quickly run through it for you because this is not too, too important. So this is like a new code that would. Oops. Oh, this is OK. Yeah, so this is a new code. That would break the test ex as well because um this one is uh, commenting out the counts equals to one so it will it won't reset the counter so um so if you run the test again it will fail so I'm just like quickly show you because i forgot that i have to do that and now yeah now it would yeah of, of course that 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 failed again because the the, the case of uh, you know what i just gotta modify this one <laughs> it's easier Oop why is it okay yeah so uh let's run that again so it will fail in a different way so yeah it will fail again like you know because well, i forgot to uh, reset it so uh, this you know this should be just like uh, oh slash and because it, it remembers it's as two so it become <laughs> yeah extra one there so it kind of breaks it so um yeah it will generate like, like different cases that kind of um that show you how it breaks and yeah just gonna show you that i think you have seen that as well before when i made a mistake so um yeah so let's go go back to uh this and yeah let's rewind rewind okay so let's uh go back to the strategy and um yeah so those okay those are the, the strategies that's kind of uh, quite interesting and uh, I, I also do some like kind of uh, so 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 far everything is in the in the um, documentation of hypothesis. I have just like give you an introduction and show you how it works, so you get an idea. It's not difficult to use. It's quite easy and it's quite nice that it provide. It's quite powerful. It provide a lot of uh, uh, you know even if you have a very complex case, you can build a strategy to uh, to cover that. So, but you may think like when it's gonna be useful. So um, that's why, OK, 
Okay, this time I gotta switch to uh, presentation. So remember <laughs> to switch back, note to self. If I forgot, please uh, let me know. Okay, so because uh, I will do some coding afterwards. So um, you see that uh, you know these cases that I kind of think of. It's like have only three of them, but I'm sure that you can come up with more. So if you can think of anything. Uh, say in the chat to share so kind of like uh, let me know what idea you have that could use a uh, hypothesis uh, I'm thinking that for example you have when you have a parser for parsing the data that's going to be useful because you want to cover as many cases as possible and find those that uh, is failing so um, one one uh, example here is uh, you know the popular one dashutil.parser so uh, I can show you what it does so, oh, actually, like, and then after that, you have to help me to pick what uh, what I would do to um, uh, in the live coding, because I got to test one of these functions. So you got to tell me which one you want me to test. OK, so uh, this is the day you parser. So, uh, so what it does is that it will take in a string and it will try to uh, if you see a dash in there. So it will try to parse it, for example. Here, I hope it's big enough. I'll make it bigger. Oops, it's super big. It's too big. Okay, so if you see here, it got like a, a string of you know time. So this is quite a neat format already. So we try to pass it into daytimes object. Okay, so um, yeah, or even like something more um, more comp complicated like this one today is blah 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 blah, and then it will um, yeah, will also still pass the daytime for you. Okay, and also it would just like put in all the excess thing in there. Um, so this is actually quite uh, difficult to test, I would say. Uh, but uh, if we can use hypothesis to test it, it would be great. So um, this is uh, one option that uh, you you want to see today of my live coding. Okay, and uh, so this is option one uh, to test the passing of data, which we got a, a typical example is the date util dot parser. So second. Example would be like if you have an algorithm to clean your data or pre-processing an algorithm to prepare your data for using machine learning algorithm. So uh, the data that come in could be, you know, because, uh, well, usually what happened in machine learning, so a brief introduction of machine learning and how it works is that you have a set of training data and you would use them to train your model. But uh, most of the time you have to do some pre-processing to clean up the data before you put it to train your model. So um, you have this uh, pre-processing algorithm, OK? So uh, so after training your model, you're happy, you put it into production. So what happened is that you use the same uh, pre-processing algorithm to clean up your production data uh, to be, to be you know, before it got pushed into the model and do some prediction and make it into useful uh, information. So. Um, so you want to be sure that this um, this cleaning data algorithm that can handle a lot of crazy crazy data that may come in in the future. Okay, so this uh, so this um, you know uh, could be useful hypothesis because it could try to guess what may what may uh, break your code, what 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 could go wrong. So um so that's quite good. Another so okay so the example would be uh, scikit-learn. So um, these. Uh, all the pre-processing algorithm that is provided by scikit-learn. Scikit-learn is a library for um, machine learning. Um, so you can see that, it, well, it, it, this is only a part of things that it provided. Of, of course, it provided machine learning algorithms. But um, so some of these are the, the pre-processing things. Um, oops. Yeah, I hope it's not too big and you can still see it. Oh, and why it goes to somewhere else. Let me uh, try to get it back. OK. So, yeah, it's here. So yeah, the, the page is a bit funny because I zoom in quite a lot. So um, yeah, so for example, uh, for a typical one, bin max scalar here. So it would just, um, you know, re like uh, push the range of your data into a new mean and new max. And um, so it's scaling your data because sometimes if your data is too big of a range, uh, it's too too much of a contrast with your other data, then you may want to compress this one um, before you train it. Okay, so I won't go into too much detail into machine learning because this is not um, a legend of data. I'm not a teaching machine learning. So um, so another thing would be label encoder. You just like you know encode all your you know categorical data into one two three four um, things like that. So uh, it become numerical and your uh, algorithm can handle that. 
And so yeah, those are the or normalizer. Actually, it's like yeah, just normalize your data. So um, yeah, so I could I could test like some of these like simple ones like the you know the mean max scalars or other stuff. Um, yeah, so those are simple ones that we could uh, try testing. Um, if, if you're interested in that, so I could uh, do that in the live coding section. And okay, so the other case that could be useful is to test scientific calculations, because a lot of time when you do scientific calculations, you would you may not know exactly what the the result is because that's what your algorithm is trying to do, but you will have an idea that um, your result is is within the range. If it's outside the range, it doesn't make sense. Or you can find a case that the whole algorithm is just like brick. It may go into an infinite loop or your algorithm will just like go crazy and have a divided by zero or something like that. So um, so this is useful to test your edge case but in your scientific calculation. Um, so yeah, this is uh, so this is uh, SciPy, so it's a powerful uh, set of tools for your scientific calculations. So um, yeah, I think one of them that I want to test is uh, to show you is the um, is the let's see if I can find it linear algebra. Yeah, so linear algebra uh, is very nice because uh, so actually like uh, NumPy is is uh, is actually what it's talking about here because um, NumPy can let you deal with matrix and it could let you deal with a lot of uh, matrix you know uh, linear algebra calculations. So one of the very neat thing is like the transposing of a matrix. So yeah, uh, not yeah the invert of it. So yeah, because like an invert of of a uh, of you know an invert of a, um, a matrix, it it become like for example a invert of a is b, but inverse of b will become a again. So um, so yeah, or like transposing it. So uh, it will come back to itself. So it's like the encoding and decoding. So it's very, very easy to test using hypothesis. So um, so yeah, we can actually test some of these uh, things. So for other things, it's like more complicated. Like I said, you may have to guess the range of the results to be able to test it. So yeah, that requires a lot of mathematical knowledge. And I think I don't want to do too much math on a Sunday. So um yeah, so I may not do that, but I may do some one, one of those simple ones, like maybe not the eigenvectors, no, not, not this one, but maybe the transposing of the matrix and things like that. So make sure that it works. Um, yeah, but, but it's not limited to that, like, because SciPy also got other things, you know, Fou yeah, Fourier transform is another one. So you can do a Fourier transform and then do an inverse <laughs> Fourier transform to have feedback, the so IFFT. So yeah, so you can, you know, first do a Fourier transform and then, you know, flip it back and to see if they are the same thing and um or at least like as you know similar into a certain range so this is you know you can see that it compacts into the same thing but it become a complex vector of course because uh, inverse Fourier transform will give you a complex number so um yeah so this is something you could test as well because it's easy if you have an algorithm like that that you know uh, it will go back to itself then you could totally test it like encoding and decoding but otherwise, you could just like you know, um, test whether your result is within a, a reasonable range. Okay. Um, so that's the other use case that I can think of. So now is the the, the live coding time. So I will dedicate the rest of the time uh, in this tutorial just to show you one um, actual case of testing one of those things that I mentioned before in the previous slide. So um, let me know in the chat uh, what you want to see, and if not, I will just pick uh, pick one that I, I like I feel like doing at the moment so I will give you uh, five seconds to to make the choice and uh, I would just sip a coffee and um, you know rehydrate and let me know um, uh, what what test do you want like uh, the, the options are there free of this and uh, let me know which one do you want and I would uh, just you know write a test Right now, it's, it's completely blind, like I said, I didn't prepare anything. I just found this example and we'll see how it goes. And it's the actual case that, you know, we're testing real life um, functions here. So, um, yeah. Okay, so there's no response, there's no preference whatsoever. So I think I'll just test, test the date util parser. Um, I think that's the most common one because the other ones is more specific use case. 
um, maybe it's more uh, applicable for people doing research or doing machine learning stuff. So um, I'll just do data detail. I think it's more common. And what I gotta do is that I gotta close some of these. Just keep the date util there, okay? And uh, first thing first, I have to install date util. So uh, <laughs> give me one second. So let's. So uh, I always have this practice of like. Uh, so this is date util. So I always have this practice of when I install something, I want to look at the documentation because. You see, this is not date util. This is Python date util. So I want to make sure that I'm installing the right package. So this is what I like doing. So let me um, do an install. It should be quick. Uh, Data 2 is a relatively small library and I have it. So yeah, that's great. And now I could uh, actually uh, start writing my test. So uh, let me, oop, I forgot to switch back. So luckily I'm just like, yeah, I've, if you look at my terminal, I'm just like, I've just installed Data 2 and that's, that's all I've done. So, okay, uh, let's go uh, back to the parser that we're dealing with. So. Um, this is a very good uh, guideline for us to use. Uh, documentation is important. Um, yeah, today I just read a tweet from uh, Victor Steiner, a very experienced uh, Python core developer, and he said that he's been like core develop a code developer for 11 years. He's in the steering console, but he still needs to read the documentation of Python, which is so true. Like even though you kind of know the your, your, your like the library inside out, there's still you know, because it's so big, you, there's still something you want to be very, very sure because you may work on it like a year ago and you can't remember the details. So that's true. Okay. So um, what have we got to do is that we got to make a new file here. And uh, so let me bring back that thing. Yeah, this thing and a new file. So I would be like um, test date util parser dot pi okay so um here i gotta first of all import the util so <laughs> yeah so i gotta how to import it i would import it as the util uh, parser dot parse so it's like the util dot parser yeah like this import parse so this is very uh straightforward way of doing that and oops yeah, yeah. windows are a bit funny <laughs> Okay, so um, I also have to import hypothesis and all this stuff. So I'll just copy from what I had here. Okay, yeah, I need this too. I may not need example, so let me cross that first. And strategy, I will think of some strategy. I will change that uh, afterwards, but uh, let's do it like this for now. So def test um, parser, test parse, okay. And uh, we're gonna figure it out later. So let's look at their example here. So they have a string. So uh, obviously we can't test everything like those today is something, something that's more difficult. And um, we could actually do that. We could actually embed this into a random string. But um, but yeah, let, let's say first that uh, we could, um, we could think of uh, maybe we first start, we would try to uh, generate maybe a random thing like this to see the see whether it could parse uh, a date like this format correctly, and then we can expand the case. Okay, so how to generate a string like this? So, um, so I would just copy this as an example there to uh, in my code to um, to help me out. So I just gotta do a little bit of a comment here and paste it there. Okay, so this is our example format. So, um, so first of all, gen to generate these, we can't be, um, yeah, we can't be, you know, just generate some random numbers and uh, we can't because, uh, you know, you can generate a 70 a second here that it doesn't make sense. So um, what I gotta do is I gotta go to the, uh, go back to the hypothesis documentation, which I've accidentally closed. Let me open it again. Hypothesis, blah, 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 okay. So, and, um, so actually there is, uh, like, uh, so these are the core strategy that's available, but also you can have a strategy that generate, um, that, uh, let you create the functions to generate, uh, different, uh, inputs, but to make things easier, I won't do it that way. I want to do it a little bit more like a clumsy way. And I got to just going to have year, <laughs> uh, month date hour uh second and 
was that and and uh, was, uh, minutes and seconds yeah so uh so it's gonna be easier so i can use the core strategy to do some integers that uh, you know complex number note and do some uh daytime oh actually it could generate a daytime but what daytime it generates <laughs> uh, time zone strategy yeah, so this is a daytime object, so this is not what we want. We want to generate a string that looks like a daytime, right? So, um, doo -doo -doo. I think we could have, uh, yeah, we could use the integer, but I, like, I'm thinking about like, what if uh, the the all these zeros in front of it? How can we um, make that work? So, uh, if it's if it's a string, maybe we could control that it only uses the digits, or we just generate, uh, oh, characters. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'm thinking about like what's the best way of writing the strategy. So this is the this is most of your work when you're um, dealing with hypothesis is to create a strategy that kind of uh, make the thing work. So um, I'm thinking about like if I can fully control the strings to be uh, to be the the one that I want, you know, don't give me any other things, but just give me numbers then that would be great uh text maybe mm. yeah Oop. yeah text okay i can set the al alphabet equals to characters so i can set it to be just uh numbers use character without argument to find this yeah Yeah, but I also want to add the um, add the trading zero there. So um, yeah, time. Why it is like also time and day times? This is funny. Um, strings towards midnight. And yeah, end of the test maybe become a little bit silly because of that. Um, Yeah, and so maybe we could do something very silly. We could do a daytime, and then we can change it into uh, into. Okay, so let's do it this way. Let's see if it works. So uh, let's use a daytime here. Day. Yeah. So let's let's do a daytime and then convert it to string, and then. Um, and then what I gotta do is that I gotta um, and I gotta wrap it into some random strings and to see if it could pass it. Okay, so and yeah, so this is a very rough rough test, but uh, because it's quite difficult to test, I'm just gonna show you one one example of testing it. So yeah, so I gotta have the daytime here. So what I gotta do is that I would have some um, before. So this would be a, te a text, okay, and then this would be daytimes. Uh, so it would be like the actual date and time, and that would be after. Okay, so I generate three things, and um, I would use hypothesis here that I got a I use given. And first of all, the first one would be a text, and I will have to, this is the last one, okay, and then inside I would have a day times, okay. Yeah, so this is a bit silly, but let's see if that works, okay. So what I'm going to do is that the input will be constructed by a uh, before plus uh, just pausing it as a string. I hope it works, but it may not work, we'll see. And... Um, So, and I would just do a parse to see if I can have any errors. Does it parse everything? Okay. So, yeah, it should also equals back to the daytime thing that we have. So uh, let's do let's do a parse of the input string. So, uh, so output is the parse of the input string, and a search. Output equal equals to input 
uh, no, day and time. Let's see if this works. I think it will break, but uh, <laughs> but we could go from there, right? We always go from there. So let's try to do a pie test. And test date. Uh, oops. Date. And uh, yeah, let's see what's going on. Right, so we have a failed test. So what's going on here? Yeah, we have a pass error. Yeah, so can can I have a look at what, what what's going wrong? The professor said that. Yeah, so if I have uh, this case is already breaking stuff. So I think this uh, zero slash is really breaking stuff. Or okay, let me look have a look at the intermediate stuff. So uh, yeah, what's going on here? So yeah, I was just like coming out, just coming out, and then I search zero yeah just gotta see what this one would be um when i print it out so yeah just to be sure that my method works and yep it's uh it's printing this thing so okay so this looked like a daytime so it should pass without a problem if uh, if the parser works but i already found a case that breaks it that uh that maybe is uh, i can't do it that way so let me try again with hypothesis so you see that um yeah so it it breaks it with the case with the zero slash so if it's zero slash uh 2000 so let me let me print out print print this out so kind of have an idea input okay so which one is broken yeah so you see that yeah so these one with the slash in front are the one that breaking it, I think. No, it's fine. It's that when it's zero slash, then it doesn't work. So, so yeah, so uh, this is the one that is breaking it. So uh, zero slash 2000 you know, dash one dash one dash zero zero. And then like afterward, it just like, yeah, I just give a, it's broken. So it's just randomly adding some stuff in front and behind and it's like some of them is already broken. So we found a broken case in Deja Tail that uh, doesn't work. The process doesn't work. So um, what you can do is like you could make a PR to uh, improve the process if you really want to, to so that this pass. But um, yeah, so this is a very rough test case, like I said, because you can have some that things that is more sophisticated like you know you can have January first you know this stuff that you have to write another case to test it I'm just you know trying to see what uh, before and after could break the pass in um, so this is only uh, s small small things that we could do so kind of um, um, show you how it works with uh, with a real real use case so uh, there are other things that we have tried before because um, I know about this hypothesis test in a sprint that we did last month and we also use hypothesis to try to test some uh, compressing decompressing um, functions in python itself in you know c python itself so hello uh comet hello how are you so um it has been an hour so let me know whether you want to see another test case or we just call it a day so um yeah uh yeah for the, for the cases that we we could test this at uh, these ones so um yeah or you can try it yourself actually like the best way to learn hypothesis is to just use it to test something so you could actually go and um, find one of these things that you could uh, try testing it so sometimes you find something like this that i found for example for this parser so you can't have a zero stash in front and it will break the parser uh, because maybe things that oh, I don't know which one is the year, which one is the date. So yeah, even even things like these pass is like super funny. So seven nine three six. So it's like <laughs> how many years in the future? You know, this is like way way into the future. This one also pass, but it's just like when you have zero slash and it it's, it fails. So, yeah, all these funny years is like it's fine in 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 day two too. I'm kind of interested. Yeah, all this stuff also work. Um, yeah, so. Um, so yeah, like for example, I found this and I may like think of whether I can have a better parser that I could, um, make it, you know, pass this case, uh, this, yeah. So 
uh, write something that, uh, you know, to test things. And uh, this could be your contribution to your, your favorite project. And also it's very useful in your own project, I hope. So um, if there's no request to test another thing, I think I'll just call it a day. Uh, today is a bit, you know, um, uh, shorter because I'm just covering this new concept of property-based testing. And um, so next week, we got to talk about something. So let me go back to the presentation here. So yeah, next week we got to talk about something, um, you know, not exactly testing, but also something that you would do uh, before you test and commit your code is linting. Um, also, I will see if I can cover a little bit of a pre-commit. Uh, it's a very, very popular tool right now um, because I, I think it would be super useful because if I set it up and then when, when my colleague work on the code, it's like they have to be linting the code for sure um, before they commit. Um, so yeah. Uh, this is a, a you know, a, I will also introduce different tools that could use to lint your code. Uh, it may also, I may also cover a little bit about talks, even though it's not a linter, but you can use talks to create an environment and put lots of linters in it and uh, with the, your test. So it'll be like a linting focused uh, for next week. So um, of course, I will talk about all these like flag age. Uh, Black as well. Black is auto parameter, but it's also related to linting. So it's kind of a, a, kind of a broad range of topics that I could talk about. Uh, auto fake, you know, like all these things. And um, yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoy today um, that, you know, this uh, property based testing. Uh, I hope it's a fun topic for you and you could try out some of these things that uh, I've introduced today and um, stay tuned and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.